the wisdom of generations of women to help you have more joy every day. The Wisdom Coalition program begins right now. I think naturally women are caregivers of others. They see their natural role of taking care of friends, family, everybody but themselves. Why it matters and why you should put yourself first. Welcome to the Wisdom Coalition program. I'm Nancy Wertin. And I'm Kim Howie. Thank you for joining us. You know, we ladies, we do such a great job taking care of all the many people in our lives. We're proud of it and we should be. But there's one person that we sometimes forget about. <laughs> that would be ourselves. <laughs> We're oftentimes so busy we forget to put ourselves on our own to-do list. And that can lead to all kinds of problems. It matters for reasons that you might not have realized. Stress is the root cause of more than 60% of all illnesses and diseases, according to the American Medical Association, and studies show women have higher levels of stress than men. Eight million women in the U.S. are living with heart disease, and more than 60% of women are obese. Eight out of 10 women admit they don't follow the treatment plans they've been given by their doctors. And most importantly, studies show women who exercise regularly, eat right, get enough sleep, and are happy in their home and professional lives have less depression, anxiety, and illnesses. So the studies say that to be happy and healthy, we have to take care of ourselves first, but it's so difficult, isn't it? It is, it is, and we're oftentimes so exhausted. And when, many of us are just trying to do it all. Yeah. Ladies like our first guest, Carolyn Hoffman of Allentown, you're busy caring for your own children and also your mother who's been ill for quite some time. Thanks for joining us, Carolyn. You obviously have a lot on your plate. Can you tell us a little bit about how difficult it is for you to time, find time for yourself? It is really difficult um, taking care of my mom who has cancer and young children who are very involved in sports and school and a college-age daughter who's very involved and you know, working um, with my population. So we get uh, very busy and taking time out for myself is very difficult at times. I. Um, like to garden, so that's one good thing. And then, you know, surrounding myself with some fabulous girlfriends and going out to eat and hanging out with them is, is, is a good time too. So I try to make as much time as I can. Not always successful at it, but I try. <laughs> And those are great ways to do that. You know, I would imagine that guilt plays a role. And I know that Kim and I have had to remind each other, you know, it's okay to take some time out for yourself. And I think as women, we always do that, right? We say, oh, I shouldn't do this. Yes. I shouldn't do that. I Definitely. shouldn't take care of myself. Have you gone through that feeling? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Especially when my mom ends up in the hospital and I'm juggling the children and, and work and she's calling me and asking me where I am. So it's, it, it, it tends to be a little difficult in trying to prioritize and always I'm the last on the list. So tendency to just forget myself and make sure everybody else is taken care of. Yeah, well, and I think it's important for us to remember that self-care is not selfish, that really when we take the time out to refuel ourselves, we have more to give to other people. Do you um, see yes. that happening in your life? I, I do, absolutely. I tend to burn myself out a little bit, yeah. so it comes a time where you have to really just say, I'm going to take this time now, and I have to refuel, and so I can be a better helper to everybody. I know on your journey, you also work for Senior Helpers of the Lehigh Valley, and we've spoken before about you actually tell people, caregivers, how to care for themselves, and yet when you now have faced the situ same situation yourself, it's been a little difficult to take your own advice, hasn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I am the worst uh, practitioner of my <sighs> advice, and I remind myself, and so do my friends now. They text me every once in a while and ask me, am I doing something for myself this week? And it's very easy to tell other people to take care of themselves, but it's very difficult to do it for yourself. Yeah. So what lessons have you learned from your experience that you could share with others? Um, well, finding your joy and, and, and finding time for yourself really is very important. If you do not take care of yourself, you're not going to be any help to anybody because it, it takes a toll on your body. You could get sick. You could burn out and just ha not have the energy anymore. And so I think that's the biggest thing where I've gotten to my point where I've run out of 
energy and I just have to take that time then. So that's the biggest lesson. Do you feel like personally your health has ever suffered from not taking care of yourself when you're taking care of everybody else? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. I tend to not eat right mm -hmm. and then of course exercise mm -hmm. goes right to the wayside and you know then with no exercising and you're grabbing a quick bite so then you're worried about weight gain and then you know that tends to cause other issues with health so it's Remembering to do that stuff, and, and that's a, a, another good time to take time out for yourself is, is when you're exercising, because that can be very freeing and yeah. relaxing. Yeah. Sure. All right, yeah, thank you so right. much, Carolyn. We're going to take a quick break. But you can go to our website, thewisdomcoalition.com, and continue the conversation. We'd love to hear from you. We sure would. But mm -hmm. first, some reflections on this topic from our Well of Wisdom. It's sometimes, it may be as women, love of self is deemed to be egotistical and therefore we shouldn't do that. And love of self is deemed to be you being a braggart and you shouldn't do that. Those are all those shoulds that our culture, our female culture teaches us. Welcome back. Joining us now is Laura Gross. You are a licensed professional counselor from Bethlehem Counseling Associates. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. Tell us a little bit about why it's so important for our mental and physical health that we take care of ourselves. Yeah, I mean, we live in such a high-paced society right now, and so most of us are operating more in a fight-or-flight type of way. You know, we have all the stress that's going on around us, and so our body responds to that and our emotions respond to that. We're not able to digest food in the same way that we should, we can't sleep in the same way that we should, and so it affects also our emotional status of just being fatigued and drained, um, just being depressed, anxious, it affects all realms of our, our being. Yeah. yeah, I'm a big believer in the mind-body connection, and I know you are as well. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about, a little bit more about the connection between our thoughts and our perceptions in life and our physical health? Absolutely. So I'm a licensed professional counselor. I'm also a yoga instructor. And so I believe so much in how our body stores our, our traumas or our stress. And so you'll often hear people say, you know, my shoulders are really sore, my hips are really sore. And it's because that's where we hold our stress. Um, you see somebody who's got some kind of an injury. We see, you know, if my shoulders really hurt. I'm, I might become a little more depressed or anxious because I can't function in the same way that I normally would. And the opposite is true as well. You see somebody who's struggling with depression, they're more likely to be hunched over. Our body responds to those signals that the mind is telling it. Well, you know, when I hear you speak, all those things make sense. However, for most of us, right, we're racing out the door, we're trying to put our makeup on in the car, we've got to get to this place and that place. And I know um, when I was researching about your background, you talk a little bit about setting boundaries. And I know, Kim, you always talk about your absolute no list. Oh, yeah. Saying no is a real skill. Right. And we have trouble saying no a lot of times to things and setting those boundaries. So talk to us a little bit, if you would, about creating boundaries. Yeah. So boundaries within relationships, family, friends, um, you know, people will ask you to do things and they don't mean it with ill harm, but there are times where I just can't do that. I have to say no. I have to take time for myself or I've had a really long week and I just can't extend myself in that way to, to help another person. Um, same thing with our family. We may need to say no sometimes. Same thing also with, you know, again, our high-paced society. Our work is so involved, and so we may have to say, no, I have to not check my email after I leave home or leave for home, you know. So setting those boundaries in all those realms is so helpful to create that space for you. Yeah, well, and I know I see this all the time in my health coaching practice. People will borrow time from sleep in order to get things done, and really when we're not getting enough sleep, we're less productive. Absolutely. Can you talk a little bit about the connection between sleep and, and health? Absolutely. We need about, as women at um, an adult age, we need about seven to eight hours of sleep a night. And so that is the time that our brain actually repairs itself so that we can think more clearly, we can make better decisions for ourselves. Um, and it also is a great way to, you know, balance for anxiety and depression in the world to just take that time to repair the body. Do yeah. you find and see a lot of women in your practice that you would say, don't take time out for themselves, and that has led them to certain problems. Absolutely. Absolutely. Not sleep. Not sleeping is one of the main things that I hear about, and that's typically related to you know, anxiety, waking up in the middle of the night. I'm really anxious. Um, and so you know, it's really hard for them to kind of set those parameters on how do I even get sleep? How do I put that into my, my day? Yeah. How, yeah. 
I'm sorry. <laughs> How do you counsel them about sleep? No. Well, often I recommend to people who are struggling to fall asleep to use um, yoga nidra. It's a guided meditation. It'll help people um, work through the body, the layers of the body, get out of their mind a little bit, and they're able to fall asleep pretty um, successfully. I also talk about structuring um, the bedtime routine. You know, we do it for children. We don't do it for ourselves all the time. But trying to stick to a, a time that works for us to go to sleep and trying to allot for that seven to eight hours where I know I'm going to dedicate this time just to sleep. Um, no electronics before bed, those typical types of things as well. Yeah. Thank you so much, Laura. When we come back, we'll show you just how easy self-care can be. But first, some more reflections on this topic from our Well of Wisdom. It just means that you're kind to yourself and you want to take care of yourself and you want the best for yourself. And I think, especially today, teenage girls and young women, they think that you can't love yourself because if you show outward love for yourself, automatically you're conceited or people are going to say negative things about you instead of positive things. Thanks for joining us once again to continue our discussion. We have both of our guests now, Laura and Carolyn, with us. Let's start with you, Laura. What would you tell someone like Carolyn about how she can find some time for herself in her busy schedule? Sure. Well, first I would ask, what do you do for yourself? What's already in practice? How do you spend your day? Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's a typical day. Look like. <laughs> uh, well, get up, get the children ready for school, get them onto the bus, off to work, and depending on where my mom is with her treatments and stuff, I might be at the hospital, I meet at a doctor's office, so my day is pretty scattered and a little hectic at times. Sure. So I would say, first, can you take 20 minutes throughout at some point during the day just to Take a breath, you know, take a, a breather from things that are going on. I usually try to do that in yeah. my car <laughs> when I'm driving. So, yes, so I usually tend to put some music on and just relax when I'm in the car, and that's my quiet time if yeah. I don't get a phone call from work. So, yeah, even I will say, you know, even if you can take two minutes in the car to take a few breaths before you go into a doctor's appointment or before you go into work for the day, that can be really helpful. Are you eating as well? Sometimes, <laughs> occasionally. <laughs> okay. Trying to eat, trying to exercise. I know you mentioned yes. exercise is hard to yes. work in there. Do you, can you take a walk with the kids at the end of the day? I try. I usually walk the sideline of the football field, so <laughs> that's that's my exercise that's a good for idea. the day. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Yeah. Great. And what would you identify as your coping techniques? What do you do to take your mind off things? Uh, music in the car, you know, put on some music that brings back good memories and just relax there for a second. So I, that, I tend to do that, or gardening. I mm -hmm. know I told Nancy and Kim uh, that I ripped my whole garden, flower garden apart <laughs> over the summer. So that was very exciting and very uh, refreshing. And that's often what I'll say to people. Sometimes we find chores that other people might seem as daunting as really relaxing. Washing the dishes could be really fulfilling after a long day to know, okay, I've cleaned up and I can focus just on that and not on anything else that's going on in my world today. Yeah, well, and as parents, I think it's important for us to recognize that we are role models for our children. So by taking time out for ourselves, we're teaching them how to care for themselves. Absolutely. Yeah. One other thing I would say is when do you find rewarding time just for you? You know, when do you give yourself a break or, you know, take a vacation or go get your nails done or a massage or something vacation? just as a treat? <laughs> what is that? I, I, I try to work in, um, you know, a massage and, you know, some, some chiropractic time and when I can. And I, I've been better at doing that now every couple weeks. So I, I try to make it a point and um, the person that I see texts me and <laughs> said, it's time, you need to come take care of yourself now. So I, I, I've been better at that. Well, you know, these questions that you're asking her, Laura, you know, it, it seems to me like you're trying to just raise her awareness. First of all, of what her day's like, where she can put those places in there that she can find some relaxation. You know, at the Wisdom Coalition, right, we talk about our wisdom symbol, which is kind
kind of similar in that we want to check in with what's happening in, on the inside. Yeah, absolutely. You know, taking control of our own joy and not really allowing those outside circumstances to come in and, and you know, take control. So would you say that just raising that awareness, asking those questions of ourselves that you just asked her, could be helpful for all of us as we're on that treadmill? Absolutely. And then make tweaks as we need to, right? Just make subtle changes as we need to to, you know, maybe it's great. You're talking about a support system of, is just another great thing that I talk about with clients is you need people too. You need people to kind of build you up. And so your massage therapist texting you and saying it's time is part of that support system. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think that also, so oftentimes we don't take the time to recognize that it's our own thoughts that are causing stress in our lives and we can be our own worst enemy. Absolutely. So do you talk to people about that, you know, helpful tips and, you know, controlling their thoughts? Absolutely. I talk a lot about um, mindfulness with clients, you know, again, washing the dishes, we could be a, mon a million different places thinking about what's going on in the day or tomorrow, but if we just stay focusing on the dishes, it's a great way to get out of that anxious mindset. Yeah. Can you just, just give us a couple of quick tips? Um, I, we've spoken a little bit about this, but when we get stressed as women, right, we're either eating too much, not the right things, eating too little, skipping meals, that kind of thing. A couple quick tips on making sure that we make sure our food intake is, is, we're thinking a lot about that. Sure. So first and foremost, do we get to the grocery store, right? Do we schedule that in our, our week to make sure that we can make good choices? Um, and then meal prepping. A lot of people find that that can be really helpful. If I go to the grocery store, I buy what I need to, I make some food in advance, then when I am rushing out the door to go to a doctor's appointment, I can grab something that's already there for me. That sounds yeah. cool. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. And when we come back, we hope that you'll join us for a cup of tea in the kitchen. And we'll show you a quick and easy self-care tip you can do anytime, anywhere. For me, refueling is working out. I may go for a walk from 10 to 11 at night because it's the only time that I can do it. The busier that my life got, the more I had to stop and focus on things that were beautiful or that brought joy. Optimism is, is healing, and I think it adds to your, your health and well-being. Welcome back. Since the kitchen is a place where many of us like to gather to share wisdom and ideas, <laughs> we're in the kitchen now with a cup of tea and a great idea. We'll be talking about mindfulness and how easy and helpful it can be. Our guest is Shonda Morales. You are a psychotherapist and the author of the book, Breathe Mama Breathe, Five Minute Mindfulness for Busy Moms. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about what the book's about. So it's a combination of five minute meditations and short mindful breaks that can be taken anytime throughout the day. And so busy moms can step off the treadmill of doing all the time and learn how to just be in short periods of time throughout the day. Mm. And exactly what is mindfulness? So mindfulness is paying attention to the present moment with an attitude of acceptance and awareness and calm and curiosity. So rather than Rather than uh, rehashing the past, spending time mm -hmm. in the past, or worrying about the future and what ifing, we can be here right now. And why is that so important? Mm -hmm. Well, for a lot of reasons, <laughs> because we tend to go through our day in perpetual motion. So when we're able to pause and come back and see a little bit more clearly what's in front of us, what we're thinking, what we're feeling, we're able to choose what we pay attention to in our day and how we respond in certain situations. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. Well, in your book, you say that we can practice mindfulness any time of the day and anywhere. So right. can we do that right now? Can sure, you help us sure. do that? I call <laughs> these mindful breaks, and okay. we can take a mm -hmm. mindful tea break right now. So mm -hmm. rather than drinking our cup of tea and swigging it back and not even recognizing <laughs> that we've had it at all. Which is what I do all the time. Right, exactly. <laughs> so what, it, what instead if we take 20 seconds to pause and notice the tea in front of us? So mm. we can feel the mug, the mm. smoothness of the, the mug and the warmth radiating into our hands. Mm, feels good. With mm -hmm. our eyes, we can notice the color. And mm. bringing it up to our nose, we can take a deep inhale and notice the fragrance. Mm. So maybe it's woodsy or floral or fragrant. And then mm. taking a sip of tea and holding that in our mouths. Mm, so using our senses. Right being more aware. 
and keeping it in your mouth or taking another sip and holding it in your I'm mouth. I'm sorry, I just swallowed it right down. <laughs> exactly what we do. So really tasting the flavor. So I failed the mindfulness <laughs> test already. It's always an opportunity to begin again. So taking another sip and holding okay. it in our sorry. mouths and feeling the warmth, really mm. tasting and then allowing as you swallow to notice the warmth moving down your throat mm -hmm. into your chest and into your stomach. So mm -hmm. how different that is, mm -hmm. just taking that 20 seconds to pause and really be aware than not having any awareness of it happening at all. Mm -hmm. And what kind of improvements will we see in our life if we're more mindful? So we tend to find this little bit more of energy because we are so relaxed and mm -hmm. we take these pauses throughout the day. So when we're rushing around, we don't uh, stop and mm -hmm. allow those moments of rest and calm. So we can sustain more energy throughout the day. Mm -hmm. um, and think about when you're interacting with other people. If you're more calm and aware, people notice that. We know what it's like when someone's really paying attention or if they're distracted or half um, paying attention. So, so it really is, allows us to be more truly with our lives and mm -hmm. be more aware of the pleasant moments as they're happening without missing out on them. Mm, that sounds great. Yeah. And it sounds like we'll be healthier too if we are mm -hmm. able to calm ourselves, right? Right, and, and mindfulness research now shows that we actually can improve our immune function. We can mm -hmm. fight off those germs more easily if we're practicing meditation and mindfulness. Um, it helps awesome. with anxiety and sleep, sleep Great. quality as well, and we could all use some of that. Well, so. thank you so much, Shonda. You're welcome. Absolutely. Thanks. Yes. Thank yeah. you so much for being with us. <laughs> and you can go to our website, thewisdomcoalition.com, and continue the conversation, or just leave us a comment. Yeah, we'd love to hear from you. Go out and spread some joy today.